Thank you for choosing CTN. And now, it's time with Herman and Sharon. I love you. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes. How are you? I'm just great. How about you? She was just mentioning she's wearing a snake jacket. <laughs> I didn't know it, but I'm wearing it's not my, real snake. Fake I'm wearing snake. <laughs> my snake shirt. Yeah, we, we did not know. coordinate this. No. I left before her, and she left. We didn't later. leave each other. I don't get that started. No, no, we're, we're still, still together. We're still together. Fifty. <laughs> you always have to say. Six years. I think everybody in the world knows right now no. that. Next you know, year, fifty-seven. Not bad. I want you to rush things. I want you to meet our I want you to meet our guest <laughs> via this clip. It's an ABC Channel 10 clip. They do such a phenomenal job that I wanted you to see and then you're going to meet the professor. Watch this. It's one of the most talked about books in the Bible, the book of Revelation. And new at 6, one man has taken it upon himself to memorize the entire thing. And this morning, recited word for word by heart for a Spring Valley congregation. He shared with us some secrets on how to memorize so much text. I'm pretty good at actually recalling the exact chapter and verse. Tom Meyer isn't your average Bible scholar. The book of Revelation takes about one hour to speak from heart. That's nearly 12,000 words Meyer has memorized and can recite on command. It's the, the capstone of the Bible. It, it tells the reader of the Bible when they finally get there how it all ends. As Meyer spoke in front of dozens at First Baptist Church in Spring Valley, parishioners followed along intently in their own Bibles as he recited the book of Revelation word for word. Hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Tom has found the process whereby we can do that most effectively and to memorize an entire book of the Bible in about 30 days. But even Jack Zura, who's been following Meyer and working on memorizing Revelation himself, got mixed up and we asked him to recite just the first few words. In the beginning was the word, and wait a minute, that's the book of John. So how does Meyer do it? Okay, I do memorize it from start to end, and I memorize uh, one verse at a time, and I write out each verse about a hundred to two hundred times. Meyer admits though he did learn from the best. Over the past four years Meyer lived in Israel among Christian monks and Bedouin Arabs in the deserts where there's still a tremendous emphasis on oral traditions to this day. Among those three people groups I was able to pick up some really neat tips on how to memorize mass amounts of attacks. Meyer hopes that through his ability to memorize and speak from the heart not only will he be able to spread the Word of God but through his efforts raise funds for those who need it most. Meet Professor Tom Mayer. Uh, he has a master's in historical geography of Israel and another master's in Middle East culture and religion from Jerusalem University College. And he's right now, even as he sits here, working on his PhD. Meet the professor. Good to have you. Thank you. This, this Tom is Mayer, right? Yes. yes. Tom Meyer, what did I say? Mayor. Mayor. Oh. I've been called worse. Have you? <laughs> Tom Mayer. I no, should know that. Meyer. Meyer, I'm sorry. You know why I see, keep saying mayor? Tomato, we, tomato. We, we have a doctor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. You and got it in your head. That's the name, so it just sticks yeah. there. See, there's memorization again. Exactly. <laughs> the brain is amazing. It is amazing. Now, how did you drop into this ability? and know that you had this, is this a gift to you or is it a gift that I could pick up? Well, it's a good question. Yeah. I think part of it is indeed a gift from God. I mean, how else do you tell 12,000 words from memory in an hour without missing a beat, i.e. the book of Revelation? Now, do you know while you're doing it, that this is not normal? Yes and no. I mean, I'm so in tune with the book and I know the book like the back of my hand. So when I'm speaking it, I, I feel sometimes that it's like, this is John. John's at your church as a guest speaker. And he's here to quote what he saw without any 
interpretation or any maps or charts or anything. It's just here's the entire book of Revelation spoken dramatically from memory. Now, and, go what ahead. What translation do you mem memorize from? I memorize out of the New King James or the King James. Okay. Yeah. Now, is that rhythmic more than any other translation? The King James certainly is. You yeah. know, I like the these and the thous, yeah. and you're right, it does have a rhythm and a yeah. meter to it that that is familiar to me. And the New King James, it has that, but it's not as much as the good old King James yes. does. Yes, because yeah. I've, yeah, I've, I just had to bring this. I, I jog on the, the beach a lot, and for years I have memorized the word, and that's the way I memorize. And this, this is full of all the ones. In fact, you'll notice they're all wrapped in plastic because I sweat a lot, too. And, and, and so I have them with me. Can I see one? Yeah. Now, you're going to ask me to memorize it. Now, this, now, now wait a minute. This is a long time ago. <laughs> Isaiah 4031. I'm just kidding. Okay. Now, I really, I, okay, Isaiah 4031. But you know what I am? My memory is weird. Uh, so it's mine. The words, if you start me. Exactly. Me too. Is that the same thing? Absolutely. Because, Absolutely. I, I mean, we have this guy named Jim Gates. I swear you could, you, you could just give a word and away he goes. So there's some people that, that, that it's totally different. Right. But, but I, I've memorized, in fact, I dropped one of these someplace in my neighbor. She said, because uh, I had talked to her about me, me memorizing words, and, and she said, I found one. She said, do I have to give it back? Because I must, <laughs> must have passed her along, and she found one. But Do you feel it's important? Is that why you started doing this, that you think it's important? That's the million-dollar question. Why do it? We have 10 copies of the Bible at home. We have it, most people have it on their yeah, phones. Right. I mean, why would I spend the time, the energy, and the effort to memorize such a large passage or book of Scripture? And... It's, 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 it's the Word of God, though, and He told you to do that. Exactly. It's, there's numerous verses that talk about the importance of hiding God's Word in your heart. Yeah. And I don't know if we'll have time to kind of unpack some of the Hebrew meaning behind the words and stuff. We but can unpack anything you want. In fact, Word Soar International Ministries. Give me a little idea. What is that all about? Sure. We're a smaller ministry whose mission is to, in faith, speak complete books of the Bible dramatically from memory as the sermon and inspire others and teach others how to do the same, how to memorize the scripture. And then the other side of the coin of what we do is we have compassion ministry where we have uh, Christian orphans and widows overseas that we take care of. Oh, that's great. Now, when you try to challenge people in the audience to do what you are doing. How does that work? Well, the first thing I would do is stand up and quote a small book from memory. Like, now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. And then after I finish the book, I would explain to them how difficult it is <laughs> for me to actually memorize a complete book of the Bible. And then I would give them some tips and some techniques I learned while studying in Jerusalem on how to memorize, and then kind of make a case from the scriptures, looking at like Psalm 119.11, one of your favorite verses, yeah. and, and these kind of verses that, that talk about the importance of hiding God's word in our heart. Do you ever go blank though? Like I, I would go blank somewhere along the line and totally lose it. You know, I've probably told Revelation from memory 200 times, and I think the only time I went blank, of course, was in front of one of my heroes, <laughs> who? <laughs> Randall Price, he's a oh, yes, famous archaeologist. Yes. And then uh, when I did Jonah, uh, I had a wardrobe malfunction, because the, the king of Nineveh <laughs> arose from his throne, laid his robe from him, covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And uh, my other hero, Jimmy DeYoung, was there, and my pants split when I fell to my knees, so, you know. Occasionally you do have some yeah. mishaps, like drawing a blank and stuff, yeah. but very, very rarely. Now, yeah. the mind is amazing that I have no problem, well, at my age you might have a problem, but I have no problem quoting the scriptures as I'm jogging. If somebody stopped me at that moment and said, quote what you just did, I probably couldn't do it. 
Now, what is that? Well, that's a good question. Um, I think the way to keep verses sharp, really sharp, is to meditate on the scripture. And we read about that in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Yeah. And there's certain blessings that come from the meditation yeah. of the scripture. And that Hebrew word for meditate means to kind of chew on or to murmur, to call up, to think about, and then to put back, to call up, to think about, and to put back. And if we can do that every day with our downtime, jogging, yeah. you know, driving to work, just yeah. go from Genesis to Revelation and tell ourselves what we know from memory and order, it keeps them sharp. And when situations arise, you want to share your faith, you want to pray to God in Scripture, whatever, right? You have those verses sharp and right on your lips. Meditation, repetition. Mm. And, and I mean, Jack Van Impey is one that always, m you know, talked about memorizing the Bible. Yeah. But you do have to repeat it, don't you? Have you ever gotten to the place where, where you hadn't repeated, practiced it for a while, and then all of a sudden you go, where did that go? Exactly. Uh, recently I was trying to memorize the Joseph story in Genesis 37 to 50. And, and you knew it? Well, I had got halfway home and then I just hit a wall and it just got really hard and I just kind of put it on the shelf and then I went and memorized Ephesians instead. And, um, but since I haven't used it, I've lost it. And now that's that- right. That's what happens if you that's don't what happens. do it all the yeah. time. Well, yeah. I know, and I know like these, you, you, I can pull them out and I, I can get going and it won't take me nearly what it took to memorize it. Exactly. So you, you, that's, that's the way it it's works. Review. Yeah. It's review or meditation. Uh, you were part of a 24-hour recite books of the Bible. I what, was. What was that? Well, uh, good question. That was right after the earthquake in Nepal in earlier this year. Yeah. And our ministry helps kids who are being sex trafficked, helps them get out yeah. of that world in Nepal. And so um, I'm... Uh, one for good ideas. And I was like, well, hey, how about my partner, Jason and I, how about we tell the Bible from memory for 24 hours straight? And in doing so, we'll uh, bring some light and exposure to what's going on in Nepal. Maybe we can help the Christians through the gifts God has given us. How did that work? Uh, well, no, the, the, they, that's another language. Well, it was worldwide. We had it live streamed across the world and um, who knows how many people we reached, but you know, uh, we were able to like tell over 20 books completely from memory in that 24 hours. We did two hour shifts and uh, it, it, was, it was very powerful. God's word never returns void and who knows who's watching and who knows who was inspired to, maybe they live in a, th a worldwide, maybe they live in a country where you can't have a Bible, you know, and, right. and then we can inspire them to hide God's word in their heart. We kind of just, take it for granted that we have this yes. at our disposal everywhere yeah. all the time yeah. and yeah. you know and yeah. to to have it hit it in your heart it's a treasure yeah that's right and it's a treasure worth storing up and laying up in your heart if you it, said you ahead. were over in israel when you first kind of started memorizing scripture jerusalem right? jerusalem <laughs> yeah before i went to jerusalem i memorized a little bit here and there in you know like a kids club at church mm -hmm. but when i arrived in the big leagues, as it were. Then I really learned the, the finer, the techniques. Over there, they still memorize. Muslims memorize the word Quran means recite. Yeah. The, the, the Jewish book, the, the Mishnah, means to repeat from memory. And many, many of the, there's eight-year-olds there who know all 150 Psalms from memory. And they just live in a world where, where power. No TV. Well, that helps, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. But a world where power is in the spirit spoken word, Amen. the spoken word. When you were in Jerusalem, what was that like waking up? What we know is the Holy Land. We've been there, but sure. it, it, it's, a, it's an experience, you know, that I encourage, if you can, every Christian to visit. But, but you, how long did you stay there? I lived in Jerusalem for a thousand days. Um, it was everything I imagined it would be, but nothing I really expected. You have uh, windows into the past there. That I mean, we live 2,000 years later than the last book of the Bible on the other side of the world, and sometimes it's kind of hard to get into the, the mindset and the, the customs and the, the mannerisms, the sandals of the original audience. So to be in their world with the importance of the spoken word and to get off the beaten track and go live with the Bedouin in the deserts and, and 
it was just a fantastic experience. Amazing. It now, is. Now, the techniques that you have come up with, okay, uh, obviously we only have a short time here, but what technique could you drop right now that would stay with our audience? Well, there's three pillars that hold up the building of memorization. The first one is reading aloud, and that's the key. We don't read aloud really in the West that much. You know, you never see someone at the airport or something, you know, reading the newspaper aloud, but that is a huge advantage. You walk by any Jewish school or Christian school or Muslim school in and around Israel, you'll just hear the kids reading aloud. Second is by hearing. Hearing the scripture over and over and over while you're walking or driving or cleaning the house, whatever, just repetition by hearing. And then third is by writing out each verse, and that's how I do it. It's just a lot of it's just discipline. You literally longhand write. Longhand write. Kind of what I've done with all these cards. Exactly, exactly. And just do it over and over and over again. And whether you read it or whether you write it or whether you hear it, the way to keep it then, which is the hard part, Hmm. you know, is to review it. Repetition. Wow. Yeah. So is that what this talks about? Yeah, the book. Now, this is amazing because you you probably need to be a professor. (laughs) But, But all of these numbers... Okay, on this side, you've got the words here, and then you have a list of numbers on each page. What does that mean? Well, um, our Bibles are printed, or they're formatted in such a way that it's not always easy on the eye, okay? And what I've done is, that's uh, just the book of Psalms, and I've just finished the whole Bible, where I I, I form it. the whole Bible? Well, not memorizing it. (laughs) <laughs> no one can do that. You put gosh. it in a, te- in a textbook. Yes, but putting it in, in, a, in a textbook uh, kind of format that when you look at it and you want to memorize the, the verse, the, it's already uh, packaged for you to memorize. And uh, the words on each line, to answer your question, kind of help as like a crutch to, to know how many, okay, I'm going to write out this verse or I'm going to read it aloud. And I know, you know, that all the conjunctions and the ands and the buts line up. And, and, and I know that there's three words on this line and two words on that line. And it just kind of makes it, uh, gives you a, an advantage to memorize it. Yeah. Wow. Now, the, the Psalms, you memorize in order? Yes. Yeah, I don't have all 150 Psalms memorized. Yeah, but, but, okay, so how... Is that a technique also? In other words, if, I mean, we all know Psalms 23. Exactly. And, but you don't do that. You don't pick out particular ones. I do p- pick out particular ones in the book of Psalms. But, for example, like in the book of Revelation or one of the whatever 20 other books I know, especially with narratives, like the Abraham story or something, you know, if you memorize it just in order, it, it, it makes it so, there's so many built-in hooks that help you memorize it. Uh, the flow of the story and, and, uh, and those kind of things just make it easier to memorize when you do a large, a large portion. That's what we want to encourage the, those people watching to do right. is to memorize a complete psalm. If they, if they just memorized the book of Titus or the book of Jonah and just did one verse a week, yeah. that's all. You can do one verse a week. Yeah. You'd have the whole book, either one of those books done in less than a year. And you just do that every year, you know, and you look back and all of a sudden you've got... 10 books of the Bible, and you could just stand up and say, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's just like you got it, you know? And they can now, do it. Now, verbalizing like that is, is also a tool, isn't it? It is a tool, because someone has once compared reading the Bible uh, and hearing it aloud to reading Mozart versus hearing Mozart. Wow. You could read Mozart on the page all day long, right? And you're not gonna hear anything, but you could see the beauty and the craftsmanship, right? But to speak it aloud, you know, it just adds a different dimension to the power of the text. Now something in your background had to give you this desire to do this memorization. Uh, Were you you raised in a Christian home? Yes. Uh, Did your parents uh, decide to tell you to memorize the scripture? as you're growing up or what? Yeah, good question. I I was born in a believing home and um, I went to a kids club and we had to memorize a verse every week and but 
Yeah, exactly. But I, I really loved baseball cards, and I still love baseball. But on the back of cards, there's stats and, you know, all these data. And so I memorized that when I was a kid. Wow. And so looking back, I could see so how... That, you had a gift then. I, I could see how the Spirit of God was yep. working in my life, wiring my mind by memorizing the back of the cards mm -hmm. to now, for God's glory, speak His Word to His and people. And the thing of it is, it's so much easier when you're younger. Yeah. I mean, when you get to be our age, it's really tough to memorize. Like it, you remember everything when you were a child. You can and you memorize it. You can remember it. it it'll come back to you, yeah. even at, at our age. But it's harder when you get older, right? It is harder. Uh, get them while they're young. Yeah. You know. Oh yes. Exactly. If these kids do one verse a week and they just keep it up, you know, if they start when they're five and they do it till they're fifteen or twenty, yeah. Yeah. they could have like. 15 books of the Bible memorized. And it's, I mean, no one cares how many books you know, really. You know, it's about you and God. But you have God's, when you memorize it, God's word is within reach. No matter where you are, no matter what you're doing. Yeah. It's right there. Yeah. It provides you with words of comfort. Yeah. Real words of comfort. It comes oh, yeah. back to you when oh, yeah. you need it. Comes back to you when you need it. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's your weapon yeah. to fight our adversary. Yeah. I mean, there's so many pluses and benefits that come from having it hidden in your heart versus on the shelf. Mm -hmm. That's what Absolutely. I was doing last night. I was running on the golf and trying to bring back to memory all the ones that I'd remembered before hmm. and, and not including the new ones. But it's amazing. By the time I got to my location where I stop, it's amazing how many verses you can say. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And, and that's all some of our people watch and need is just to polish up those ones that are maybe a little rusty, yeah. right? And to tell them to their self every day, which is, which is meditation. This now is it. A, I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Lee. Now you're a professor, right? I am at Shasta Bible College in Redding, California. And we teach the only accredited class in the nation on Bible memorization. Now really? what, do you, what do you have to do to pass that course? Well, you have to get uh, at least two or three consecutive chapters of a book memorized and to stand up in front of chapel and present it in a, a powerful way. So you have to kind of act it too? Act you it do, out. there's a little, yeah, there's a little bit of that in there, yeah. you know? I mean, it makes it more interesting. It does, I mean, look at, there's emotion, there's love, yeah. there's hatred, yes. there's anger, yes. there's all kind of emotion that's just flat, mm -hmm. you know? But when a, a living being gets up and speaks it, it's just like, whoa, yeah. wow. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have, alive. have you had some students that you go, that is a student that has a gift like I have. Yeah, I have one or two in mind who have uh, the whole book of Romans memorized. Wow. The whole book of John. Just amazing. When, it, when you put your mind to it mm -hmm. and the now, Lord helps you. Now, yeah. it, from your class, they were able to accomplish this. Yes. So prior to that, they were not doing it. No, prior to that, they had memorized Romans and John, but they came to my class, okay. and then I just kind of worked with them on their delivery and polishing up their techniques and, and kind of just, you know, you helping them. You say desire to memorize the Bible is disappearing. Absolutely. The, in the 21st century, 90% plus of adults have uh, cell phones. 58% of those are smartphones. We live in a time where an unprecedented era where look at how many copies of the printed Bible we have at home and we just don't need, we're not forced to memorize by our culture. Everything yeah. is instant. Press this, take me there. I don't, I, guys, <laughs> I went to go tell the book of Revelation from memory to church and I forgot my phone and I had to call Sarah, my wife, and uh, I don't know my wife's phone number. <laughs> <laughs> But I can tell Revelation from sure. memory. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> that's the world we live in. We don't yeah. have to memorize anything. So, unfortunately, we're missing out on a little something. Yeah. I know. Mm. People ask me what my cell phone number is. I tell them, I don't know because I don't call myself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, literally, I do not know. So, But she knows. It's interesting. Or at least how it's on your it's, cell phone. It's, so it's, it's how the mind yeah. creates this memory system. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, you know, when, when you get older, the, re the reason it's so important, honey, to memorize yeah. is because if I ever start running on the beach and I recall no verses, I'll turn around and come back to the house. But <laughs> I go, it's hit me. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. <laughs> Seriously, though, it, it keeps the mind just like exercise. You're so right. You know, they, whoever they are, say adults who memorize yeah. poems, it's just skyrocket through the roof. They have such a higher, lesser chance of, of 
Alzheimer's yeah. and these kind of yeah. terrible things. Mm -hmm. Just working the mind, not just watching TV all day. Keywords. Except this show. Yes, yes. <laughs> Keywords to help the memory. What are they? Keywords to help the memory are number one, repetition. Okay. Number one is repetition. Number two is dedication. You can do it. If you put your mind to it, number three is prayer, praying that the Lord Jesus helps you. Yeah. You can do all things. Because this is God's inerrant, God-breathed yes. word. Yes, yes. What better place to have it stored up than in your heart? Wow. That's right. Share Christ with somebody. That's your camera right there. And they may have never trusted the author of this book. You need that first. You need to know the author personally. Share that. Recently, uh, well, not so recently, it was about five or ten years ago, I was working with my dad, and uh, we were in a parking lot, and there was a guy fixing the lights, and I felt led to share the gospel with him, and he didn't want anything to do with it. And um, I was the last person on earth he talked to. Wow. He left the parking lot, he got hit by a semi-truck head-on, and he left this world. And, um, you know, 9,700 people die every hour, mm -hmm. something like... 180,000 plus people die every day, and most of them are slipping into eternity without Christ. Today's the day of salvation. We don't know what tomorrow holds, and if you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, you, you can do so right now. It's just acknowledging that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. That's right. I just, you talk about that story, I was just reading one where this guy wanted to talk to this, he happened to be a politician, <clears throat> and he, he said, I need to talk to you. And he said, I don't have a minute. I mean, I don't even have a minute for Jesus Christ. He said that day he was assassinated. Isn't that in interesting? That we so often are so busy and feel that we have no time. And can you imagine that guy that was killed that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. did, did you ever have an opportunity to pray with him or did? I did not, but I did have the opportunity to, along those lines, share the gospel with a politician. I was praying for the longest time that God would let me tell Jesus, about Jesus, to a king of the earth, and I wasn't specific about the nation. Five, eight years later, whatever, I'm working in Israel. I'm at the exact place Gideon was given as 300 men 3,200 years ago. I turn around, I kid you not, on all of God's green earth, he brought me and the president of Israel, he just showed up unannounced. Now, I'm a little bold, so I just walked right under that security fence, told him the gospel, gave him the Hadashah, the New Testament Hebrew, and there you go. Wow, that's great. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> that's great. Jesus Christ is the answer to every need you may have. Memorize the word of God. Store it in your heart. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching It's Time. If you have recently made a decision for Christ, Herman and Sharon would like to hear from you.